So now that we can solve linear equations, let's talk about solving linear inequalities. And a linear inequality is one of the, it's an equation basically that tells you something is not equal. So we can't call it an equation. And it has one of these symbols. It has the less than symbol, which points to the left, less than or equal, which points to the left, but has the equal bar underneath it. Greater than points to the right and greater than or equal points to the right with the equal bar underneath. And those symbols are going to tell you that you can include or exclude certain answers in your solutions. And for this particular problem, we have what's known as a solution set, because there are multiple answers here that can satisfy the expression. And really the way we solve these problems is going to be determined by whether the symbol is a less than or less than or equal to, or a greater than or greater than or equal to. And we're going to actually show these solutions because there's multiple solutions and there's no one right answer. When we show these solutions, we use a number line or we write them in algebraic or interval notation. And the key thing you need to remember when we do this is if you ever divide by a negative and the variables which you're dividing by a negative, you always flip the direction of the inequality. That's because negatives make everything go opposite. So let's look at this particular first problem. It's called a less, this is a less than problem or a compound problem. Less than really means and. So you're solving an and, which means you're solving in between two things. And when you do this type of problem, whatever you do to the middle to isolate x, you're going to do to both sides as well. So we want to isolate x here. So we want to isolate, this says that 3x plus 5 is basically greater than 15, but less than 21. That's how you read that. We always read the, this statement first. The symbol points to the left, so that's greater than for this particular case. The symbol points to the left, that's less than because the way you're reading left to right. So when we read this, we want to solve it. To solve, we want to isolate the value of x. I want to undo. So I'm going to undo the 5 in the middle to get x, y. So if I subtract 5 from the middle, I've subtracted from both sides as well. And this is what we call a compound inequality because you're solving it all at the same time. You've written more than one inequality at the same time. You're solving it like that. So we subtract 5 on both sides. So here is a 10. That's less than 3x, which is less than 21 minus 5 is 16. Then we still want to get x by itself. So to isolate the multiplication that's taking place, to undo that multiplication, I need to do division. I'm going to divide everything by 3. And when I do that, I get this right here. My solution set is x is in between 10 thirds and 16 thirds. This right here is already written in algebraic notation. Algebraic notation uses the inequality symbols and a variable, the algebra, to actually express it. The number line or the graph for this can be written like this. I like to put zero on my number line, so I know where I'm located. 10 thirds is here, 16 thirds is here. I need to decide whether I to include the, the boundaries of 10 thirds and, and 16 thirds or exclude them. Well, we tell if we can include or exclude based on this symbol here. Because these symbols don't have the equal to sign, we're going to exclude. This means to exclude. And we show exclusion on the number line by using a open circle. This means do not include those values. And now I know my solutions for x are allocated between those two values. So I'm going to just shade this number line between those two values. So again, we need to decide if we exclude or include. Here we're excluding because there is no symbol underneath. Sometimes you will include depending on there's a symbol underneath, such as this problem over here. Now when we do this then, this is called the graphical or the number line for it. We can also do what's called the interval for it. The interval is created by looking at the number line. And we're going to use parentheses where the parentheses mean to exclude. Or we can use brackets where the brackets mean to include. Here, because we're excluding the values, we're going to use parentheses around 10 thirds. And we're going to go up to. 16 thirds. This says take every x in between 10 thirds and 16 thirds, not including 10 thirds. That's what this means. Don't include it. Or 16 thirds. Don't include. 
This is called the interval. Now, for the other problem, let's look at that. Notice that we have a little more math that has to occur here first. And in order to solve any inequality like this, we're always going to first, we're always going to first distribute when necessary. So we're going to distribute this out and make this look better. So this is 3 minus 2 times x. I'm going to distribute this negative 2x, this negative 2 to both those inside of there first. So when I do that, I get 3 minus 2x plus 8 is greater than or equal to negative 1. I'm going to combine like terms on this side. So I get negative 2x, 3 plus 8. 3 plus 8 is 11 plus 11 is greater than or equal to negative 1. And so now when I do this, I'm going to solve, I'm going to actually get x by itself. I want to isolate the x. I want to isolate the x. And so to isolate the x again, here's what has to happen. The way this is read is that we're looking at it with what we call a greater than problem. And when it's greater than, in order for this to work, greater means it can either be greater than negative 1 or it can be, technically it can be less than or equal to positive 1. The signs are actually going to flip here. So we have a greater problem, a greater, I remember, the way I remember it, if I say greater, great or, or it can either be whatever this symbol is in the back, you're going to do the positive and negative version of it by flipping this sign, though. But again, we need to wait on that because now we see, we see this negative variable. It's going to affect things. So when I look at this, I need to first isolate that negative variable. So I want to isolate this x variable. In order to do that, I'm going to subtract off 11 on both sides. So I get negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 12. Now, I don't want to deal with a negative variable. So to fix this, I'm going to divide by negative 1. Because I want to look at the variable as 2x greater than or equal to positive 12. But remember, this symbol has to flip when we divide by a negative. So this actually needs to become a less than or equal to this. And now because I'm dealing with a less than problem, now I'm dealing with a less than problem, what's going to end up happening is in a less than, less than, and, it's an and problem, and means you're going to be in between two things. And you're just going to be in between the negative and positive of this. So what that means is I'm going to solve the actual equation now is negative 12 less than or equal to 2x, which is less than or equal to positive 12. So remember, I told you about greater earlier because we were looking at the greater than sign. But as we continue to work the problem, we see that the sign had to flip because we divided by a negative. So now we're at an and problem. And we solve this. We're going to do whatever we do to the middle. We do to both sides. So I divide both sides by 2. And I get negative 6 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. There's the algebraic. And this time, notice our symbols. Our symbols say to include. Those mean include. So I'm going to draw closed circles there, shade in between. And then the final part is the interval. The interval goes, because I'm including, use the bracket, negative 6 to positive 6.